Okay. Good evening. And welcome to everyone who's joining us on the internet. Before we begin, let's all get on the same page. If you're in the sparkly book, it's page 312, the first full paragraph. If you're in the second edition, it's page 267, paragraph 5. If you're in the first edition, it's page 249, the second full paragraph. And if you're in the JCIM, it's page 131, the second full paragraph. <clears throat> It might seem strange to say that uh, we've arrived at a very important part of the book, A Course in Miracles. But the fact is that we have. <clears throat> and it's especially important because there is a sentence which I dictated to Helen that does not appear in the first or second edition. And without that sentence, it becomes almost impossible to glean the full meaning of the portion that we've been reading last week and that we will be reading tonight. This one very important sentence is, the Holy Spirit is nothing more than your right mind. This is a very key sentence. It is a very key teaching. Because without it, as we read in this portion of the Course, it would be very easy for you to think of the Holy Spirit as part of the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Something far beyond you. And yet, you could say the essential teaching of the Course is that the Holy Spirit is nothing more than your right mind. Or we could reverse it and say, your right mind is nothing less than the Holy Spirit. Now, we spoke last week about first gear, second gear, and third gear. First gear is where you are listening to the voice for truth. Second gear is neutral. Where you are just, where you think that you have a mind of your own, a place for you to simply be, and from which you can shift to first gear and listen to the voice for truth, or from which you can shift from neutral to third gear, which is the voice for fear. And of course, fear and guilt are two sides of the same coin. Now, one can read the Course and think that the Course is about learning how to be in neutral without engaging guilt or fear, without yielding to or giving your attention to the voice for fear so that you might always be in a peaceful place in neutral in second gear but as we discussed last week the voice for fear and neutral are illusions 
you do not have a place from which to be on your own. That's an illusion. And a capacity to listen to a voice for fear only seems possible if you insist upon occupying this invalid and unreal position called neutral where you're not connected to the voice for truth where your divinity is not a part of your awareness of yourself where you are not yielding to anything except your own self-developed expertise at being an independent authority and loving it It would seem that to improve oneself in neutral, one has to learn not to be governed by the voice for fear, as though that's the improvement needed in order to wake up. Uh, and hopefully, as you read the Course, to desire to listen to the voice for truth, which you've learned is available to you in the altar, in the very middle of you. But it's very possible for you to imagine that the Holy Spirit that is available to you in the altar, in the very center of your being, is still the Holy Spirit, part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. If you cannot abandon that unreachable and different definition of the Son and the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to wake up and you will not be able to embody what the Course is teaching. you can see that this is very important. If you want to wake up, <clears throat> you have to abandon the orphan mentality, the sense of self that has no source, no father, mother, but is somehow self-existent or a product of a physical movement in a physical universe. Evolution. But you want to wake up. You want to become sane again. And so this is going to require not just abandoning the voice for fear and from neutral position listening to the voice for truth the Holy Spirit, that which is nothing more than your right mind, you are going to have to be willing to abandon neutral gear and let that which is nothing more than your right mind be you. It cannot be put any more simply than that. That is the gospel. That is the good news. The self that you think you are in neutral is never going to be improved to the point of waking up. It is ultimately going to be abandoned because you, you have come to a point where you are willing to commit yourself, invest yourself fully in letting 
your right mind replace the sense of a mind that you have developed from a vantage of point in which you have conceived, you have conceived of yourself as being an independent entity separate from a God. Something set in motion and given the option and task of self-governance. That belief will keep you dreaming. It is what needs to be abandoned. And the sentence that does not appear in the first and second editions of the course is what makes utterly clear the truth of what I've just said. The Holy Spirit is nothing more than your right mind. So again, we're not talking about improving your puny little self or helping others improve their puny little selves. We're talking about shifting entirely from a mental frame of mind in which you independently and autonomously govern yourself and your affairs and where you are willing to re-embrace the only mind that is yours, that mind which is in perfect balance, perfect harmony, perfect sanity. That mind which you must let take you over. That mind which you must let supersede the mind you've imagined you have. Let's go to the book. You, whose minds are darkened by doubt and guilt, remember this. God gave the Holy Spirit to you. See, that means something quite different when you know that the Holy Spirit that God gave to you is nothing more than your right mind. It has a very different meaning than it would if you think of the Holy Spirit as part of the Holy Trinity that is vastly different and distant from you, although it embraces you lovingly. You whose minds are darkened by doubt and guilt, remember this. God gave the Holy Spirit to you and gave him the mission to remove all doubt and every trace of guilt that his dear son, you, has laid upon himself. It makes sense, doesn't it? The Father has given you that which is nothing more than your right mind to replace the mind that you have imagined, that you have filled with illusions and misunderstandings and errors. God has given you your real mind, your right mind, to replace a mind in you that is suffering from its own false beliefs from its own illusions. It is impossible that this mission fail. It is impossible that your right mind will fail in its purpose to unite you to bring you back into 
a whole awareness of yourself. You could say to bring you back into unity consciousness, which would of course be infinite consciousness, all-inclusive, where nothing of what the infinite mind that is God is, where you are the fullness of what God is. Nothing can prevent what God would have accomplished from accomplishment. You know, if the Holy Spirit really were something at a distance, in a holy position with God and Jesus, It would be easy for you to imagine that maybe the Holy Spirit couldn't reach you. Or maybe you couldn't reach the Holy Spirit. But if you understand that the Holy Spirit is nothing more than your right mind, it becomes obvious to you that it's actually impossible for you to be separated from it. Even if you are ignoring it. And therefore the inevitability of what I'm going to call reunification becomes clearly possible and reasonable. As well as inevitable, if indeed the Holy Spirit functions as the, I'm going to say, embodier of God's will. Therefore, any temporary insanity that you pretend to be in will necessarily be temporary. Necessarily. And the truth of that becomes obvious to you when you realize that the Holy Spirit is nothing more than your right mind. Whatever your reactions to the Holy Spirit's voice may be, and I am chuckling because um, Paul understands fully what I'm speaking about, because the Holy Spirit's voice is one that he and all of you uh, will resist from time to time. Even though it's nothing more than your right mind. Whatever your reactions to the Holy Spirit's voice may be, whatever voice you choose to listen to, first gear or third gear, voice for truth, voice for fear, whichever voice you choose to listen to, whatever strange thoughts may occur to you, God's will is done. That is why you can't pretend to be insane forever. Permanently. You cannot establish it because God did not establish it. What God is being, right where you are, is the only thing that can be right where you are, no matter how creatively imaginative you might become. you will find the peace in which he, God, has established you. God is the establisher. You will find the peace in which he has established you because he, God, does not change his mind. He 
He is invariable as the peace in which you dwell and of which the Holy Spirit reminds you. You might not have thought about it. You might not have taken an overview of your experiences of guilt or of fear. But if you will observe the next time you are experiencing either guilt or fear clearly, that the experience is mesmerizing. You even have a phrase, caught in the grip of fear. And it becomes difficult to set it down. It becomes difficult to ignore it. It becomes almost impossible to imagine that there can be reasonable justification for shifting your attention from it, your compulsive, addicted attention from it, and give your attention instead to your peace, the peace that is part of your being, that is the nature of your being which is inescapable. Remember, we spoke last week about the fact that there seem to be two powers at war with each other. And one of them is real and one of them is unreal. And your escape from the conflict lies in your willingness to identify one of the voices as unreal and therefore not an actual power or force that can accomplish anything. And in that awareness, you are released from the imagination that there can be conflict that can impact you and injure you or hurt you or demean you actually. And in that realization, you will find yourself free of the invitation to fear free of the mesmeric, hypnotic invitation to justify the experience of fear and then attempt to overcome it. See, it's the one in neutral that would hear the voice for fear and become enticed into overcoming the voice for fear. And that's where the mistake is, and that's where the clarity has to come into focus so that you realize that it's not the overcoming of the fear that's called for, but the abandonment of second gear from which you are observing fear and guilt entice you and engulf you and instead turn to the voice for truth in you. Invite the voice for truth in you 
to reveal the truth about you. Invite your right mind, which is utterly and ultimately divine, because it's the presence of the mind for God, to reveal to you the truth about you that has nothing to do with a second gear called neutral or a third gear called the voice for fear. God is invariable as the peace in which you dwell. It's your environment. It's the environment of your being. And the environment of your being that was established by God remains forever unchanged and therefore forever available to you. God is invariable as the peace in which you dwell and of which the Holy Spirit, that which is nothing more than your right mind, reminds you. Your sanity is forever on hand reminding you of the truth of you always always it is present with you reminding you so when you shift your attention from third gear the voice for fear and you abandoned you abandon second gear neutral And you let first gear be fully you. You will be allowing what God has set into place for you to do what it's supposed to do. And you will call it waking up. You will call it the end of illusions. It will be an experience of joy. And so, no matter what problems you are faced with, no matter what the nature or character, no matter what its unique peculiarities are, no matter how in no matter how seductive they are. you must remember not to take the bait. And even if you do take the bait, you must recognize it and remember that you must give your attention to first gear knowing that it's not pie in the sky Holy Spirit, but ultimate Holy Spirit which is nothing more than your right mind whose function it is to replace your misunderstandings and your confusion and illuminate your infinite sanity and return you, return you to your right mind. That's important. It's not going to bring your right mind to you here in second gear. It's going to return you to your right mind. Now, continuing. You will not remember change and shift in heaven. You have need of contrast only here. Here, 
in the kingdom of heaven that you are calling the human condition. Here in neutral. Contrasts and differences are necessary teaching aids. For by them you learn what to avoid and what to seek. And I will say, hopefully you learn what to avoid and what to seek. What you need to become aware of is that what you call life, which most everybody is living out from neutral, is not something to be lived out forever in neutral. It is an experience from which you're supposed to learn and not stay in. You see? Contrast and differences are necessary teaching aids to one who's living in neutral, seeming to sit with the voice for truth on his left and uh, <laughs> the voice for fear on his right, while he remains innocently playing with one and the other as though it doesn't make any difference and that's life. Nothing to learn. Just, you know, use spirit to overcome evil and watch while evil tries to overcome spirit so that you can have this thrill of overcoming this dastardly voice for fear, you see. No, <laughs> you're here to learn. Contrast and differences are necessary teaching aids. For by them you learn what to avoid and what to seek. When you have learned this, you will find the answer that makes the need for any differences disappear. Now that doesn't mean that there won't be trees or flowers or individualities. Those aren't differences. But a bad person and a good person or poison oak and a rose do seem to be differences. They will disappear. but not creation. When you have learned this, you will find the answer that makes the need for any differences disappear. Why? Because you won't need to be further convinced of what you want and what you don't want. Listen to this. Truth comes of its own will unto its own. The voice for truth is nothing more than your right mind. Truth comes to its own. Truth comes to you of its own will because of the absolute unalterable integrity of you, of being, of creation. Truth comes of its own will unto its own. When you have learned that you belong to truth, it will flow lightly over you without a difference of any kind. Truth will not illustrate differences because you will no longer be confused and attracted to that which is not true without realizing that you're supposed to learn something from the uncomfortable experience and stop doing it. You see? Again, when you have learned that you belong to truth, see, this is again the yielding to the Holy Spirit, letting that take over you which is nothing more than your right mind and is therefore a sane and intelligent thing to do, well, when 
when you have learned that you belong to truth and aren't just some little entity sitting in neutral that can hmm, take a little bit of truth from the voice for truth and take a little bit of fear from the voice for fear and sort of mix them up and work them around and have a little bit of excitement and then finally lean a little bit more toward the voice for truth so you have a, a breather, some peace, you know. Uh, <laughs> When you've learned that you belong to truth and it's not a thing for you to employ, it will flow lightly over you. It won't be hard to hear the truth. It will flow lightly over you without a difference of any kind. For you will need no contrast to help you realize that this is what you want and only this. Fear not, the Holy Spirit will fail in what your Father has given Him to do. In other words, fear not that the Holy Spirit will use contrast in a way that would cause you not to learn what you need to learn. Do not be afraid that the Holy Spirit will use contrast in any way other than the way that will trigger awakening and graceful growth, graceful learning. Because its function is to return you to your right mind in which there is no confusion and therefore no suffering. Fear not that the Holy Spirit will fail in what your Father has given him to do. The will of God can fail in nothing. You see, you cannot escape. There is no way that you could ever have gotten outside of the will of God. There's no way you could have gotten outside of your right mind. The only thing that you can seem to have done is to have drawn a little circle within the infinite mind that you are. And then say that this circumscribed part is all there is of you. Well, it isn't all there is of you, but it is you. It's the presence of God viewed in a limited... Your right mind undoes the boundaries and reunites that which is all of you to you. Have faith in this one thing. Have faith in only this one thing. And it will be sufficient. And this is it. God wills you be in heaven. And nothing can keep you from it or it from you. Why does God will you to be in heaven? Because God didn't create any other place for you to be. It's that simple. And because of that, nothing can actually keep you from it or it from you. Your wildest misperceptions, your weird imaginings, your blackest nightmares, what? All mean nothing. They are meaningless. They will not prevail against the peace God wills for you. The Holy Spirit will restore your sanity because insanity is not the will of God. If that suffices him, God, it is enough for you. 
you will not keep what God would have removed because it breaks communication with you with whom he would communicate. His voice will be heard. That's like saying your salvation will be experienced. You, in your right mind, will be the only one left. No orphan among orphans. Just the real you. The son, the daughter of God. Embodying, willingly, what God is being right there where you are. Because you were willing to abandon all of the rights and privileges you thought you had as an orphan to be your original self on whatever terms you wanted to make up. But because they that put you in a position of disconnection from what you divinely are, which we're calling second gear neutral, you immediately created the third gear to cope with. Because in your separated state, it's impossible for you not to experience fear and guilt simultaneously. You see? This should, be coming, this should be becoming clearer and clearer to you. The clearer it becomes to you, the easier it will be for you to comprehend making the choice for the voice for truth, which you can safely do because you're making the choice for that which is nothing more than your right mind, not your tiny little self's right mind, but the presence of what God is being infinitely right where you are, from which he has withheld nothing of what he is. The communication link which God himself placed within you, joining your minds with his, cannot be broken. Here again, this could be under misunderstood. What is the communication link which God himself placed within you? The Holy Spirit. Mind you, the Holy Spirit came into existence, we will say, when you decided to become imaginative and get a divorce from your father and try to be an independent entity. When you did that and circumscribed the infinity of you by a smaller circle and said, this is me, Did you annihilate the rest of the infinitude of you? No. It's still there, but you're ignoring it. And that is what is called the Holy Spirit. The allness of what God is being right there as you is now divided by your act of independence into the Holy Spirit and the little orphan in neutral gear. So, as long as you've maintained this little circle and say what's inside is 
all there is of me, the Holy Spirit, everything outside it, is present and pressuring, pressing against the boundary so as to break it. Again, the communication link which God himself placed within you, joining your minds with him, with his, cannot be broken. You may believe you want it broken, and this belief does interfere with what? The deep peace in which the sweet and constant communication which God would share with you is known. As long as you're in neutral, you are going to be dealing with the actuality of the voice for truth and the illusion of a voice for fear. And the two will seem to be in conflict. You will and do call it the human condition. And you think the human condition is life. That it's the ultimate. And that you must make the best of it. And that's your task. And you have even imagined that there is, there are reincarnations. So that you might learn better and better how to be in this fashion. But I'm telling you, the answer is to get out of neutral. Abandon neutral and the voice for fear. The communication link which God himself placed within you, joining your minds with his, cannot be broken. And so you can get back. You may believe you want it broken. You say, oh, I'd rather struggle a little longer. It's pretty exciting. I have a lot invested in what I'm doing right now. Let me see if it really is going to fail before I yield to what you're suggesting. You may believe you want it broken, the connection, and this belief does interfere with the deep peace in which the sweet and constant communication which God would share with you is known. Yet, his channels of reaching out cannot be wholly closed and separated from him. What does that mean? His channels of reaching out. You. Every aspect of creation are his channels of reaching out, of extension, of expressing love, of embracing and blessing with all that he is. His channels of reaching out cannot be wholly closed and separated from him. Peace will be yours because his peace still flows to you from him whose will is peace. In other words, God. You have it now. You say, I don't have it now. I haven't had peace in a long time. And even when I had it, there was never any stability to it. Therefore, it couldn't have been real peace. It's all bullshit. You have it now. Why? Because you couldn't have second gear or third gear if you didn't have first gear. You can't have an illusion of nothing. You can't have a distortion of nothing. You can't have a false experience of nothing. It's that simple. Peace will be yours. 
because his peace still flows to you. From him whose will is peace, you have it now. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to use it and by what? Projecting it to learn that it is in you. The key here is that you must do something new that you haven't done before. You must stop trying to improve the human condition. You must stop trying to improve everything by using the definitions you have given to everything. By using the value you have placed in everything, you must abandon that and cultivate the curiosity to have revealed to you the value God has put in everything, which will reveal to you His purpose behind this or that or the other thing, or embodied as this that or the other thing. You see? God willed you heaven and will always will you nothing else. The Holy Spirit knows only of His will. Now isn't it wonderful that you can no longer think that the Holy Spirit is something high in the sky. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. God willed you heaven and will always will you nothing else. The Holy Spirit, that which is nothing more than your right mind, knows only of His will, God's will. There is no chance that heaven will not be yours. For God is sure, and what he wills is sure as he is. Now, you might be listening to what I'm saying and be thinking that, wow, this is uh, like a giant leap that I'm talking about. I'm asking something of you that is humongous, impossible and it's not I'm just asking you to recognize what the answer is and the answer is not you in neutral trying to improve the human condition by working the good and the evil better or by being independent better as though you could be independent without the voice for fear accompanying you absolutely you will learn salvation because you will learn how to save. It will not be possible to exempt yourself from what the Holy Spirit wills to teach you. Again, I know the ego thinks that sounds like control, but when you realize that it's your right mind which wills to teach you of your integrity and your indivisible wholeness, you will realize that it's not control, it's really sanity. Salvation is as sure as God. 
his certainty suffices. Learn. Here it is, learn. You're supposed to be learning. Learn that even the darkest nightmare that disturbed the mind of God's sleeping son holds no power over him. He will learn the lesson of awaking. God watches over him and light surrounds him. God watches over you and light surrounds you. Can God's son lose himself in dreams? Well, it seems as though you can. Can God's son lose himself in dreams when God has placed within him the glad call to waken and be glad? Oh, again, what is this that has been placed in you? That is a glad call to waken and to be glad. It's the Holy Spirit. God has placed in you that which is nothing more than your right mind. And there was no way for you to abandon it, actually. It is the glad call. If you will but abandon second gear and third gear, realizing that in shifting your attention and embrace to first gear, it will, it will dissolve second and third gear and return you to your sanity. And you will be glad. He, you, cannot separate himself from what is in him. His sleep will not withstand the call to wake. The mission of redemption will be fulfilled as surely as the creation will remain unchanged throughout eternity. Why? Because they're one and the same thing. Your creation by God was an eternal creation. You, in your right mind, are an eternal creation. And because of that, your temporary confusion can only be that temporary. You do not have to know that heaven is yours, reality is yours, to make it so. It is so. Yet the will of God must be accepted as your will to know it. But remember, what we're talking about is making a shift to your right mind, which is an act of integration and therefore an action of integrity and one that can be embraced without fear and with commitment. The Holy Spirit, that which is nothing more than your right mind, cannot fail to undo for you Everything you have learned, and that word learned should be in quotes, everything that you have taught yourself from second gear, the Holy Spirit cannot fail to undo for you everything you have learned that teaches you what is not true must be reconciled with truth. In other words, that what you have created from second gear which has been created from a vantage point of fear and guilt, that it must be able to be brought to a point of being real. Absolutely as real as God's creation. 
The Holy Spirit cannot fail to undo for you everything you have learned that teaches you what is not true must be reconciled with truth. You see, that has to do with manipulation from second gear of the things in third gear and somehow making what's going on in second and third gear become equal to what is going on in first gear, which is reality. That's the reconciliation that the ego would have you engage in. And it's the reconciliation that I mentioned at the beginning tonight, where if you don't know that the Holy Spirit is nothing more than your right mind, then you are likely to engage in your spiritual path from second gear using the elements of fear and guilt because they're inseparable from second gear and thereby never accomplishing your awakening because you're trying to reconcile the wrong things, improve the human condition. Now listen to this. This is the reconciliation, I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit cannot fail to undo for you everything you have learned, taught yourself, that teaches you what is not true must be reconciled with truth. This is the reconciliation which the ego would substitute for what? Your reconciliation into sanity and into peace. And there it is as clear as a bell. The reconciliation has nothing to do with dynamics between second gear and third gear. The Holy Spirit's reconciliation for you is helping you to abandon second gear and third gear and succumb to, yield to, be overcome by, be overwhelmed most beautifully by the Holy Spirit, which is nothing more than your right mind. That's the reconciliation. And that's what, as you read this course, you must understand it is pointing you in the direction of. The Holy Spirit has a very different kind of reconciliation in his mind for you and one which he will effect as surely as the ego will not effect what it attempts. The Holy Spirit, that which is nothing more than your right mind, has a very different kind of reconciliation in his mind for you. It's a reconciliation with him. It's a reconciliation with everything outside the tiny circumference that you've placed in the middle of the infinity of you and claimed to be all there is of you. The Holy Spirit has a very different kind of reconciliation in his mind for you and one which he will effect, accomplish, as surely as the ego will not effect or accomplish what it attempts. What is the ego? The voice for fear. Third gear. Third gear will never accomplish anything because it is an unreal power. Now, during this coming week, I'm going to invite you all to go over what we have read last week as well as what we've discussed this week. It is incredibly invigorating motivating and um, contributive to sudden shifts of perception. Miracles.
and I look forward to being with you next week.